What's up, YouTube? We're back from Columbia. I got back about like a week ago. So I've been cruising back here. Gonna look for some stuff, already finding things, you know? You know how it goes. But um, it's November, right? So everyone loves pumpkin spice lattes. Here in Hawaii, we have access to all the ingredients that grow naturally in the forest. So, so let's try to make our own pumpkin spice latte from scratch down at the house. All right, so what we have here is a coffee plant. Also what we have here is coffee rust, which is kind of a new disease that's affecting the coffee trees here in Hawaii, which that isn't good because I love coffee and this is not chill. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna pick some of these red berries. This is the coffee berries. This is nice. This is the color you want right here. I'm gonna pick these just because that's what we got to work with today. But um, leave the green ones so they can get more ripe. But that's a start. Now all we need is like 40 more of these to make a cup of coffee. Here's this coffee tree. And if you can't notice, it's not doing too great. A lot of the leaves have fallen off. With coffee, the first thing that happens when it's in a rust situation, like what's going on right now, it's um, fighting for its life. So it's dropping its leaves, maintaining the fruit so it can reproduce itself. But this sucks, dude. But whatever, it's invasive anyways. <laughs> but still, I like coffee, so it's one of my favorite invasives. Let's get a couple of these guys. I was in Colombia with these guys and um, I was hiking with them and I was like, oh, this is, uh, we have this in Hawaii. I called, we use it like a toilet paper when we're in the woods. And then the guy started laughing. He's like, we do too. We use it for toilet paper also. So this is a worldwide toilet paper plant. <laughs> this is one of those, what the fuck is this? Some kind of starch. Oh, hell no. <laughs> That's how you know. I mean, don't ever do that. Don't you ever do that yourself because you could kill yourself. Look at this big ass spider right here. That's pretty scary looking. Usually I only see big cane spiders in the house. Dude, I was seeing some spiders in Colombia. You can't even dare mention their names. They're so scary. This is a uh, mamaki berries right here. This is a mamaki tree. So these little mamaki berries, they actually get it kind of sweet and I'm pretty sure the birds eat them and then that's how this thing propagates itself. But the mamaki berries taste really good. I don't eat them because I want to see this thing do good and keep spreading itself around. But very good herbal tea, very traditional Hawaiian herbal tea. Technically it is a nettle, like a part of the nettle family. And I'm really looking forward to experimenting with it more this year as like using it as a base for sauces and tea-based smoking and other, other types of things. So we're here at Duke, my favorite uh, cinnamon tree. I named him that. And as you can tell, this is from seven months ago, five months ago, maybe three months ago, I'm pretty sure. But this doesn't hurt the tree. This is fine, they can handle it. This is what bark is for. Bark is the protective layer of the tree and protects all the organs and shit that's inside of it. So this has absolutely no effect on the life of the tree. I like how people kind of go crazy with that shit sometimes. But when they're invasive, like this guy Duke over here, I named him Duke because he's just a beautiful tree. He's nice and strong compared to all the other cinnamon trees up here. Like I said, this is cassia cinnamon. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just clearing this moss off because I don't want this in my, my drink later. But let's clean this guy off. Those nice red lines is what we want. So. And I don't need a lot today. I mean, I have still a bunch in a jar and the more this stuff ages, the more smelly and, and cured it gets. So it's actually better to to use it after it's been cured. But since I'm gonna do this quick today, I'm gonna do it in the oven. I'm gonna heat these up, get that oil to come out of it so it's like a really strong cinnamon flavor. Then I'm gonna blend it up with the coffee and um, 
steep it all together so all the flavors come out. And I have some other spices that I forged the other day I'm gonna show you that we're gonna put inside to get that real pumpkin spice latte flavor. Um, so I'm grabbing some wood sorrel. Just as a little garnish. Wood sorrel is really good and lemony. It's got a really good flavor. And um, I want the really micro, micro ones. But I don't want to kill them, so it's like, I mean, I don't, I don't want to like kill the look of them. So they're so delicate, you know. Like while collecting these tiny ones, I gotta be super careful to not crush them just with my finger pressure. Common ground clover, also known as wood sorrel, and uh, this one it grows here in Hawaii. It's not invasive but it does, uh, it's not naturally occurring either. Invasive technically means that whatever the plant is, is out competing the local indigenous plants for resources, space, out competing them and killing them in the process. So that's what necessarily makes a plant invasive, you know? And if you look over here, does anyone know? I've been like wondering about this. Is this dandelion like, because a dandelion technically is that, right? Like, let me know in the comments if you guys know if this is a, like dandelion greens. Because if it is, I'm going to start eating it as a salad. Like, that'd be cool. But let me know if you guys know what that is. Okay, so now here we got some uh, go-to cola. And I need microgreens for my dish later. But my microgreen guys are out of, uh, or they're not um, open today, so... I figure I can use go-to cola. It's like a really nice, um, carroty flavored, uh, just a green. It goes really good in salads and stuff. And I'll show you how I use that later in my pumpkin inspired dish. Look at how the go-to cola and the ground clover are um, growing together. Hold on, look at this. You wanna see a little hand salad? It's like lemony, carroty, mm. so good for you. Go-to goal is good for your brain. It's a fact. Just look it up. Bro, has all these guavas right here. White guavas too. Jungle provides. So we're gonna grab some of these for uh, flavor and also because they look nice. This is a garnish and also a flavor. Ginger flower, so it has a flower flavor of ginger, but it also is just beautiful. Look at that. Here we got some nice red beans. So you can actually, check this out. You can actually just eat these like, so you can actually just eat these like, there's, it's a berry, you know? So it's got a unique flavor. Oh, one of the beans fell off. And it's loaded with caffeine. So it's got a sweet, nice flavor, like a fruit. And then back tones, you get that green coffee flavor. So we're just gonna collect enough for our um, one cup of latte today. But this stuff is so strong, guys. You gotta be so careful to not go into a cardiac arrest of um, caffeine. All right. This way? All right, so we got back to the house from harvesting some coffee, some cinnamon, allspice, all the ingredients we need for this pumpkin spice latte. And then how's all this Hawaiian wild coffee right here. Very nice. So I'm gonna show you step by step how to process this into coffee from the bean. So if you wanna just take a look real quick, that's the coffee bean that we want. So in order to get this out, dried, ready to go for roasting, it's gonna be a step by step process. So I'm gonna show you first thing we do, we're just gonna rinse it all off with some water. Just get all the dirt off of it, any ants or bugs or whatever followed us back from the forest. 
Look at that nice red color too. This is some premium coffee bean right here. Get all the beans out of the husk. I'm gonna save the husks and dry them and make them into something. I'm not sure yet what exactly, but I'll look up online this one. <laughs> so we added water to it. We took off all the husks and now we're floating them to determine which ones are bad. So we're gonna take the bad ones. You can, can kind of tell too, just by looking at them. You see all that brown stuff. What I'm gonna save those for is trying to grow them. So I'm gonna propagate these bad ones since they're not edible, but hopefully they still can survive. So we got our good beans over here and they're still covered in a husk that we have to remove. And it's got like a cellulose kind of thing. It's really slimy and sticky and hard to get off. Usually at this point, I would soak it for a couple of days, strain the water out and um, get all of it to like start breaking up. Then I would dry it in the sun and then it, it just kind of peels off. But today we're gonna artificially do that process by throwing it up here in the oven. So we're just gonna go ahead and throw it in here for around like 200 degrees for a little bit until you can start to see them start breaking off. We're doing like a little bit of a quicker version today. So right here, we have some allspice that I got yesterday in Makiki in a different trail. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I like to process my allspice. And this is the main flavor ingredient inside of pumpkin spice latte. It has like hints of nutmeg, cinnamon, coriander. It has like everything in one, hence the name allspice. It's one of my favorite things to cook with and has such a good nutty flavor. So I'm gonna get these blackberries are the ones that have all the oils that I want. Nice, and then I'm gonna get some of this cinnamon too. And this is that wild cinnamon we collected earlier from Duke, the cinnamon tree. And we're gonna just kind of put it around here. And what I'm gonna do with this is lightly toast it to bring out the oils and get the flavor to come out. Then we're gonna blend it, mix it with our, or we're not gonna blend it, we're gonna mortar and pistol it. And we're gonna then mix it with the coffee and then brew it. So we got our coffee roasting now. I'm gonna kinda like move it around a little bit. It looks like it's almost dry where we want it. Yeah, we don't wanna scorch it too much. So we're gonna take that out in a second. And then we got our spices right here. Getting nice and toasty. I just want it to, it'll change color a little bit more. That's what we want right there. Perfect. So let's, So I'm gonna smash up all these spices. We got cinnamon, allspice, and holy crap, that smell is crazy right now. So what I'm trying to do is get it nice and powdery because I'm gonna do the same process that I'm doing to the spices to the coffee. And we're gonna boil it all together to infuse the flavors. And that's gonna give us our pumpkin-y, spicy, Fall flavored latte. So that is our spice right here. And that smells, oh, that smells so good. Perfect. So now what we're doing is we're kind of like going through this fast. We're doing a speed it up process today because this isn't the top um, harvest. This is the beginning harvest. So it's still about like a month away. I'm just taking all the red ones that I could find that are gonna go bad because people like to harvest them when they're all red at the same time, which is usually in about a month or two from now. So that gives me the excuse that I'm just gonna do a quick roast with the husks on. And that's a nice color right there for me. 
It's going to be extremely caffeine, caffeinated because the longer you roast them, the less caffeine you have. But we're just taking off this little husk and that's our coffee bean. And as you notice, they're not as big as the ones in the stores because these are wild. So remember, anything wild is usually a lot smaller, but more nutrient dense than their farmed counterparts. So this is our coffee that we got. So that's all the work we did. And this is what you get, which is about one espresso shot of coffee, which is perfect for our pumpkin spice latte. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this and I'm going to just do light roast. I mean, it's already kind of roasted, but I want to kind of finish it off. You see these kind of like whiter colors. You want to, you want to get that. So I turn the heat down a little bit so we don't burn them. But these can withstand a good amount of heat. And the more you roast them, the more concentrated the flavor becomes. And it's really good. Okay, so we got our coffee beans properly roasted now. And remember our spice. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go and start crushing up. I don't have a coffee grinder, but I do have motor and pestle. So this thing is like the old school grinder. It takes a little more time, a little bit more elbow grease, but holy crap, the smell that's coming out of here. The mixture of the allspice and the cinnamon with this toasty coffee is it's making me crazy. All right, so I'm going to pour our coffee and spice mixture in here. Add a little bit of water and boil it, and then we're going to strain it into our coffee cup over here. Make some foam, and then we'll have our pumpkin spice latte. That's a good water to ratio, coffee ratio. Perfect. Okay, so as you can see, we got our coffee rolling and now it's infusing with all that stuff. The spice is working. Oh, that smells like a pumpkin spice latte if I ever smelt one. Right now it's infusing with allspice and wild cinnamon and our wild coffee. So, these are the basic ingredients for pumpkin spice. A lot of people add nutmeg and other things, but I was just trying to use what I could find today in the forest. Believe me, when you smell it, the main ingredient is all spice. And when it's this potent, it's like you're going to have that perfect uh, winter, fall flavor, sweater weather flavor, if you know what I'm talking about. This is how they make coffee in Colombia. Wow, that smells so good. And if there's a red tinge in there, that's coming from the cinnamon. Cassia cinnamon has a reddish tinge to it once it gets hot in water. But how nice are these little frothers out? Okay. That works a little too good. Okay, I need a spoon. Okay, so this is our pumpkin spice latte. Let's have a taste. That's so good. It tastes just like uh, fall or winter. But we don't have that here in Hawaii. We just have the same day every day. The allspice, the cinnamon, the roasted coffee. It's pretty heavy actually. Like I thought it would be a lot more of a light flavor, but it's got a considerable dark roast tinge to it. Thank you guys for watching our pumpkin spice latte. It took a lot of work to get this much coffee and their wild spices and stuff, but it came out great. Thank you. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll check you guys out on the next video.